A security conference and a demonstration of support for both Eastern European nations are taking place in Bolboka, Moldova, just 12 miles from the Ukrainian border, where about 40 European officials are gathering in advance of Ukraine's planned counteroffensive against Russia. The alliance highlighted the security risk of holding such a high-profile summit, with dozens of EU and NATO officials attending in that specific location by announcing that NATO's airborne warning and control system surveillance aircraft will be monitoring Moldova's skies throughout the event. The Belgorod region was the target of another cross-border strike, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, which it attributes to Ukrainian terrorists. Kiev insists that the militants are Russian citizens who oppose Putin and denies any connection. Recent armed incursions into Russian border area have been blamed on the combatants, who identify as the Russian Volunteer Corps, RVC, and Freedom of Russia Legion. Three persons were killed overnight as a result of Russia's relentless missile attack on Kiev, an 11-year-old girl, her mother, and another woman. The Ukrainian Air Force claimed to have shot down all 10 Russian missiles, however the deaths and injuries were due to falling debris from the interceptions. Since the beginning of May, Russia has attacked the Ukrainian capital 18 times. The White House will continue to suspend import taxes on Ukrainian steel. The Biden administration will prolong a temporary suspension of duties on Ukrainian steel for another year, according to U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo. In order to preserve vital export opportunities for one of Ukraine's most important industrial sectors and maintain the employment of Ukrainian steel workers, President Joe Biden delayed the Section 232 penalties in May of last year. The United States has given the steel that Ukraine is able to export a much-needed market during the past year. Americans are directly assisting the Ukrainian people by doing this, as many of them depend on the country's steel industry for their financial security, Raimondo said in a statement. In a time of unlawful war, she continued, the United States demonstrates its unshakable commitment to the Ukrainian people by extending this measure for an extra year through the presidential proclamation announced today. Under the Black Sea Grain Agreement, one ship departs from Ukraine. In accordance with the Black Sea Grain Agreement, one ship departed from the Ukrainian port of Kornomorsk with 62,545 metric tons of sunflower meal. China is the destination of the ship. In July 2022, Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, and the United Nations came together to form the Black Maritime Grain Initiative which created a humanitarian maritime route for the shipment of agricultural products. If no more extensions are reached, the earlier this month extended agreement will expire in the middle of July. Since the start of Russia's war, more than 500 Ukrainian children have died, according to the United States. On Twitter, U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Bridget Brink noted that the ongoing battle with Russia had claimed the lives of more than 500 Ukrainian children. Heartbreaking. More than 500 Ukrainian children have died as a result of Russia's indiscriminate, all-out war in Ukraine, the statement continued, adding that two more children were tragically killed during another round of Russia's cowardly nighttime attacks. Inhumane examples of Russia's war crimes and crimes against humanity include the broad and systematic attacks the Kremlin has carried out on Ukraine's civilian population as well as the illegal transfer and deportation of thousands of Ukrainian children. In a subsequent tweet, Brink stated, justice must be done. War crimes committed by the Kremlin's troops in Ukraine have already been refuted. Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, and Maria Lvova Belova, the country's commissioner for children's rights, are the subjects of an international arrest order issued by the International Criminal Court in March. According to the court, Putin and Lvova Belova are allegedly responsible for the war crime of unlawful deportation of kids from Ukraine to Russia. The Pentagon is purchasing SpaceX Starlink satellites for Ukraine's internet. According to the Pentagon, it has decided to buy SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet terminals for use in Ukraine. Elon Musk owns SpaceX. The Pentagon said in a statement to CNBC that, we continue to work with a range of global partners to ensure Ukraine has the satellite and communication capabilities they need, including Starlink. 
The agency contracts with Starlink for these services since satellite communications are a crucial component of Ukraine's overall communications network, the statement continued. Additional contract information, such as the cost and delivery schedule, was refused by the Pentagon.